Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's June 28th, 2022, and one of my uh, missions that I want to do today, I've already been a little bit busy. I, well, I'll show you that first before I tell you the mission. I'm gonna put, the, the mission is to put some tomato cages around our tomato plants, our San Marzano tomatoes. So those are two foot diameter tomato cages that I made out of concrete reinforcing forcing mesh, and I've made videos about that in the past. But uh, this morning I came down here and used uh, the stirrup hoe again in the pads. Uh, and we're going to have a dry day today, so hopefully a lot of these weeds will, will, uh, will not survive. And I used the tilther to do weeding going down the wider pads where I could work it down in there. Uh, we have been using the weed mats exclusively each year. Uh, oh, the other thing is uh, in these beds here, these two here where the, uh, the carrots did not germinate, uh, Thea came down and put some uh, kidney beans in here. Uh, hopefully today we'll get some uh, soybeans going down the center in, in the corn grow here. They're, they're high enough where I want to put soybean. And some of them, we have enough of the rhizobacter that will inoculate the seed for that. And uh, and that's about it. So tilting this, and one of my goals is to try and get some uh, some white clover and some uh, uh, Roman chamomile in the paths. So trying to get as much life going on in the beds as possible, as opposed to what's worked for so well so well so far are the weed mats with just having a single row of plants going down. So there are the San Marzano tomatoes there. I may have to prune them a little bit. Thea will probably come out and help me. I see one of the tomatoes has fallen off of the support stakes. But what I'm gonna do, oh, I did go ahead and do a little bit of tilting in this path as well and use the stirrup hoe. And it is a five inch stir stirrup hoe that I find to be so handy. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is go over there and get uh, Optimus Maximus, the Kubota L6060, hook onto the dump trailer and head out back next to the forest back there and grab some of my uh, tomato cages. And then I'm going to use a half inch rebar, which were come in uh, to, when I purchase it, they come in 20 foot lengths. I cut them into quarters, so they're five foot tall. And I'll put a rebar at each side of each cage and each cage will touch the other cage. But it's getting time now before the plants get much bigger uh, to get the cage around them as well. So that's what I'm gonna work on right now. Okay, we're out here putting the tomato cages on the uh, San Marzano determinate tomatoes. And so we use Optimus Maximus, the uh, Kubota L6060 hooked up to our old dump trailer. And I went out and was able to get like 16 or 17 of the tomato cages. 
These are made out of concrete mesh, uh, the material that you'd put into um, into a support concrete being being poured in your in your floor, whether it's a driveway, a sidewalk, or your uh, basement floor. And I just took those and I made it so that there's two foot diameter, which works out pretty darn well. There are some challenges you may. So there's these little nubbins where the vertical, I'm calling them vertical because that's how we have the cages. So every six inches, there's these small little wire cutoffs that stick up. The other thing, so we use wide weed mats. Uh, we have wide permanent raised beds over there. And I turn the automatic drip, uh, drip tape on when I'm doing this so that just in case we spring a leak, I don't have to run a new drip tape underneath each one of these uh, cages. So these are our determinant. I know a lot of people comment and say, well, San Marzano, tomato, San Marzano tomatoes are indeterminate. This variety is, this cultivar is a determinant, meaning it gets about six foot tall, maybe six and a half foot tall, the tallest. Uh, so, after planting them, when we planted them in these permanent raised beds that we use drip, a single drip tape going down along the base, the beds are quite wide so that they can support a, a full two foot uh, diameter cage equally all the way around. We use quarter inch uh, reinforcing bars that are pounded in. These are about three foot tall. We get these at Tractor Supply and then Thea goes down and tapes them. Uh, uses some ties to support the tomato plant to that main one. Then I come down with five foot lengths of half inch rebar. This is concrete reinforcing bar. Comes in 20 foot lengths. I cut it into quarters so that each one are five foot. And I pound those midway between each one of the tomato plants and one on the end, each end. The drip tape is down here. Here's the drip tape here. We have we don't burn holes anymore in our weed mats we run a weed mat down into the paths on each side it's dirty right now but this system works well for us we have wide paths as well and uh, this system works now the tomatoes will just sort of uh, maybe if the top gets damaged on one the axillary uh, branches so we keep pruning off where Thea has been pruning off all the lower branches initially until we get to this stage. It just makes it much easier, much neater, less of a chance of there being uh, mold issues on the lower leaves, less of a chance of us missing some of the leaves as well. So how's it going, hon? It's going great. I got it down oh my, pat now. Oh my God. Just don't puncture the drip tape. That's right. So these little nubbins right here that we could see right here, we want to make sure that when we set our cages down, that it's the flat part that's sitting against the drip tape itself and not the little vertical part. Even if it isn't leaking now, the high winds that we get will, will grab a hold of, especially as these plants get large, it, it'll push. So the winds coming out of our northwest over in this direction, come around here and we'd lose everything if we didn't use these cages because everything tall would get blown over. The smaller plants, the brassicas, the, the, the kales, they do okay. The onions do okay. Uh, I mean, they will get blown over, but they'll upright themselves again in the future. So again, 3 16 to a quarter inch uh, bar to support them with some small tapes to wrap them and support them, pruning the lower leaves. When we transplant them into the soil, we dig down pretty darn deep into the soil. We use mycorrhizal fungi to enhance root uh, development and transportation with other microorganisms in the beds. Last seed after the tomatoes come out, we will plant a cover crop in this area to feed the microorganisms in the soil. So we don't use any fertilizers here. We just allow the uh, microorganisms to feed the plants themselves. Everything close to the ground for the tomato plants, we prune off. When we're making these cages, we use the cable ties, which are the type that are adjustable. So you press that little button right there. 
and you see Thea's going ahead and tying that one up right now and so it's easy to take them off at the end of the season season and put them in a bucket like Thea has right there yay yes, there we are and this year it's much easier since Thea's retired now for the two of us to work together to get these cages around the tomatoes and all uh, so these ones she just supported again because they were starting to lean over some we had some high winds and uh, these tomatoes will take off like crazy next week they'll really be shooting up quite a bit and we'll we're already starting to get some of the flowers are starting to produce some small fruit uh, but it'll take a little bit of time so that's where we are at this point So that's our system for getting the tomatoes uh, transplanted into the ground, get them supported, get them pruned below the, uh, below at the let's say one to one and a half foot level uh, to try and decrease the chances of, of uh, mold and that sort of thing and to keep the leaves from getting burnt as well. We do use the weed mats with uh, two weed mats right up against each other. Uh, we use, now we're using a 3 16 or a quarter inch, three foot tall bar and using ties to hold them, to keep them supported to going vertical and we can cut off all of the axillaries and the side leaves until we get to the appropriate height. Uh, and we use the mycorrhizal fungi to extend the surface area or the functioning unit of the uh, roots system on here. And uh, we keep our, our weed mat uh, mounds pretty wide as well. So those are our two foot tomato cages with a half inch rebar. And with the two of us doing it, geez, it took less than an hour or so. So that worked out great. So if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. I do have a video on how I make these, couple of videos on how to make the tomato cages. And I have, uh, and I'll try to put a link to the uh, cable ties that we use in the, in the description below as well. And I think that covers it. Happy gardening, everybody. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.